Welcome everyone. Welcome to Confidence Through Cabaret. My name is Heather and this is Thursday, which means we're talking all about work life. So in Confidence Through Cabaret, we talk about personal life, work life, and stage life. And so Tuesdays is all about, sorry, Thursdays even, forgot what day it was. Thursdays is all about work life. And we're continuing on with uh, something that we started on Tuesday, which was about assertiveness. And we're, we're, we're kind of moving into a time of looking at boundaries. And before we can really set our boundaries, we need to understand, you know, our behavior, what our rights and responsibilities are, and, and, and really, um, you know, kind of understanding how we want to behave and how we want to treat others. And so on Tuesday, we were talking about assertiveness in general terms for our own personal lives. And we were talking about reasons why we um, should behave assertively, what assertiveness is about and how that helps us. Um, we talked about assertiveness as being standing up for our, our rights in a way that doesn't deny others' rights. So we talked about our rights to express our needs, wants, desires, uh, to express ourselves basically, or not to choose not to express ourselves even, um, but in a way that doesn't violate others. And we looked at that line between uh, assertive, uh, sorry, assertive in the middle and then aggressive and non-assertive. So go and check out Tuesday's um, video from this week. So that would be the 12th of January, um, talking about assertiveness. Um, if you wanted to have more information about what assertiveness is and what we've discussed around your rights and also your responsibilities. But I just wanted to pick back up on the rights and responsibilities because when we think about our work lives, then it's useful to be able to develop some assertive skills. Um, confidence is about your belief in the ability to handle a situation. So the more clear you can be about your message, the more easily understood that it is. And I discussed with you that, you know, communication is all about how can you know what I've communicated or how can I know what I've communicated, I should say, until I understand what you've understood. So um, when we think about assertiveness, it is about confidence and belief in your ability and your rights to handle a situation and communicate and share what you want or need to share. It's about being clear in your message um, so that you can be understood. And it's about being controlled or considered in your behavior so that you deliver the information in a considered way. So assertiveness is always about considered response. And for some of us who are extroverts, we often don't take the reflection time to think about uh, what our response might be. We just respond. <laughs> um, certainly when we're engaging in extroverted behavior, that's how we are. So even if we prefer introversion, then we typically would consider our response. But in a moment, we might behave in a way that's reactive and in a way that is not considered. And, and, and sometimes that denies our own rights or others' rights. Um, so knowing what you want to say is important and then considering how you want to say it. So, so in this session, we're talking all about assertiveness skills and that is so useful um, for lots of parts of our lives, but I wanted to put a work spin on it. I, I run a lot of um, assertiveness training courses in, in my corporate world and um, it's always the most interesting course that I run. And by that, I mean an interesting mix of people who are attending an assertiveness training course. Um, so we, we tend to have a mix of those who are non-assertive, who would like to become more assertive, and a mix of people who are tend on the, the aggressive side and don't consider response and, and often don't aren't aware of denying others' rights um, and sort of bulldozering through sometimes as an example. Um, and so we, we tend to have these two ends of the spectrum of um, assertive and non-assertive, um, you know, and, and what we're trying to do is come together into that middle ground. And that can be a tricky uh, program to navigate. Um, so, so when we think about, you know, what assertiveness is at work, we need to consider are our 
are our rights being upheld? Do you know how, how are we being heard? Are we being understood? And some of that will be a reflection on how are you communicating in terms of how are you being heard? Are you being direct and clear and considered? Or are you maybe being reactive and, and therefore in some way coming across as aggressive for, for some people? Um, or perhaps you're not asserting yourself at all and it's too passive a style. And so remember that um, when you want to get your message across, it's considered. And the easiest way for you to have a considered response, especially if you're inclined to rush in or you're in that moment feeling like you want to rush in, then the way to go is to breathe. And that, that seems like such a simple technique. But in the moment, if we just take that deep breath, and we've talked about this lots of times uh, in Confidence Through Cabaret in our Facebook community, which is very active, you should join by the way. Um, and we've talked about that, you know, a couple of times here on YouTube, but just taking that really deep breath, giving our brain the oxygen that it needs to consider the response and then, and then responding. Um, so while we're doing that, it gives us an opportunity to reflect on what are, what are my rights? And I'm entitled to say these things. However, how I say them is all important so that I don't deny anyone else's rights because that's my responsibility. So one of the um, things that comes up in a workplace is how to say no. Now, I know this doesn't only come up in the workplace, but I want to talk about it in a workplace. So for example, if something's been delegated or something's being asked of you, then how do you say no? So first of all, remember your rights. You can say no, but how you go about it is all important because you'll cause a response when you, when you say no. So I'm not saying, you know, change your language so that it's all fuzzy and you're not really saying no. You should definitely directly say no. But a more assertive way rather than no, which can come across as a refusal and can come across as not reasonable or not um, assertive, is to say, no, what I can do is, I'm not able to do that at this time. I could do that for you for next week. Um, so what can you do? Consider what you can do. And then your, your right to say no is much more likely to be heard as a considered response. So say no with clearly, say no friendly, say no openly, but you don't need to offer excuses. See, one of the great things about this is that you don't have to share more than you want to. So you being um, clear and saying, no, what I can do is look at that next week. No, what I can do is this part of it. Um, no, I, I don't know how to do that, or I, I, I have too many other priorities. I mean, I always say to people, you know, if you've got too much to, to do and something else is being delegated to you, go back to the person who's, who's your, maybe your line manager, for example, and say, I can do three of these things and I have six of these things on my plate. Which of these are the priority and, and, and have that discussion with them um, so that you're not saying yes to everything. And then you can't possibly, you could do each one of them, but you can't possibly do them all. So don't offer excuses, be clear in your response and then check that they've understood not only the, the message, but also your intention behind the message. So keeping your voice clear and calm, and that's where breathing again will help you because it will help you to be clear and calm. If you're faced with aggression, then you should be talking in, rather than saying you language, like you, the way you are talking to me or the, you know, you're, you said, or do you know, those kind of things can um, fuel the aggressive behavior. So be thinking about, I feel, take responsibility. When you speak to me like that, I feel. When I hear that, I feel. That's fair because nobody's gonna say, no, you don't, <laughs> that's not rational. So um, you could say something like, when you speak like that, I feel uh, uncomfortable or I feel like it's difficult to listen or I feel like I'm unhappy to continue with the conversation. Um, if that doesn't work, then this is my favorite technique. Um, I use this a lot, is to really think about what is your core message? And this is the broken record technique. So it goes like this. Um, 
you would come up with a simple one sentence phrase and you would say that phrase and you would repeat that phrase. So for example, when I um, managed a large team in the workplace, I used the broken record technique for the first time I can remember, um, talking to somebody who was constantly late and I would say, you're late. And they would say, oh yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, but you're late. We talked about it. We agree that this wasn't going to happen again, and you're late. Yeah, yeah, but I missed my bus. And it was raining, and I couldn't get on the bus, and, but you're late. And I can remember saying that to somebody on my team who was constantly late, and I, I felt very uncomfortable about it, and I didn't know what to how to handle it because we'd had lots of conversations and lots of promises, and you know it was all very friendly. And I thought, how do I get out of that and move forward into a more assertive conversation where I'm an adult, you're an adult, and you need to hear me? So I would say you're late, and I can still remember the moment when the person I was using the broken record technique, and that's all I said, lots and lots of excuses and stories, of, but you're late. Yeah, he said, yeah. And then it was like a diffusion and then we could talk about what's really going on. And so the core message is, a uh, sorry, the broken record with your core message is a really great way to go. Um, you know, I think there are many um, ways that you can kind of tap into your ability to be able to speak up. But when you think about your right to say no, your right to, to, to have your message be heard. Sometimes we put too much language around it and we need to just cut that language back and just say what we need to say in a direct, fair, considered way. And if you're not being heard, use the broken record technique. Say no as clearly as possible. Say your message as clearly as possible. Don't add additional language around it. Don't offer excuses. Don't offer explanation. Just be clear. And what that's actually one of the first lessons that I learned it when I when I joined a burlesque class in in comfort in, in cabaret um, was about you know don't apologize, don't explain, and we don't do that for our bodies, and we don't do that for our voice, and we certainly don't do that for for our needs. So. Um, we will be talking more about assertiveness as we go through looking at boundaries. And there is so much information on boundaries, but I just wanted to kind of check in with, you know, kind of assertiveness at work. When you think about Zoom, and I, I, I don't want to make this a full assertiveness course because this, you know, is a huge topic. But when I think about um, assertiveness, when I'm thinking about things like Zoom, it can be very difficult to be talked over um, because it's, it's, it's a difficult kind of thing. If it's even on the telephone, it can be very difficult to be talked over. Um, so use the different things that are available to you. So using somebody's name, if you need to politely interrupt, or if you feel like you're not getting a word in edgewise, then use their name. And then you can say, Ryan, can I just add a point? And our name has a kind of a halting effect and that can add um, a moment for them to pause so that you can be heard. Um, when you're using something where you're where you're online, so for example, something like Zoom, then typing in the in the message box. And again, if you use their name, it's very helpful. So a few tips there. We will come back to to more tips. So much more to to share with you. Join us on www.confidencethroughcabaret.com. Join us on our Facebook group. All the social medias, Confidence Through Cabaret, with two exceptions. Uh, Twitter is at YBYWYS and uh, Clubhouse is at Heather YBYWYS. So join us there. We have lots of challenges. We have lots of fun. We discuss these, these topics. We discuss where, where is it difficult. We discuss um, boundaries. We discuss anything that helps inform our confidence. So join us tomorrow. We'll be talking about Self Care Friday. So we'll be talking about Focus on You. Um, my name is Heather. I'm so happy that you're here. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. I can't wait to see you on the social medias. Um, thank you for joining us. Remember, it's your body. It's your world. And it's your stage. Own it.